We know that's okay. Uh, so we've heard something already of uh, uh, James Yeary's contributions, uh, but James Yeary is a poet and visual performance artist, and he lives in Portland, uh, Oregon. Portland, Oregon. Uh, he's a member of the Sparrow Collective, uh, for whom he recently organized a festival of poetry for multiple voices. He's publisher of the chapbook series C, lowercase C, dash L, books. How do you pronounce that? I like the vocalization. I pronounce it different ways all the time. Okay. Okay. And is co-author with Nate Orton of the uh, zine se of the zine series uh, My Day. Uh, his work has appeared in Ditch, Peaches and Bats, and Shifter. And we're really pleased to welcome him here. Thanks. Um, my silence. The the ink will disappear. Uh, both uh, appropriation and the negation of writing are uh, the major themes of the kind of a series of projects uh, or under maybe a, a larger uh, project that is kind of an a-visual or non-visual performance that I've been working on for the last several months. Um, uh, it's a, a series of experimental plagiarisms called Karaoke Super Ego. Um, <laughs> But uh, I'm, what I'm reading tonight is kind of a, a chronology that uh, begin. maybe it's a fictitious chronology, but a chronology that begins before that project and is kind of the, the thought that, um, that leads into the, the end of writing, or the writing that comes after writing, or from outside of writing. Um, I'm going to open with an epigraph from Beckett's Malone Dies, and I'm going to finish with... Um, a lot of stolen. There is no use in dieting words. They are no shoddier than what they peddle. After the fiasco, the solace, the repose, I began again to try and live, cause to live, be another in myself, in another. How false all this is, no time now to explain. I began again. But little by little, with a different aim, no longer in order to succeed, but in order to fail. To place a coin on the lid of the eye that contains or contained this ghost object. The blur in the author, that kind of projective opening. Anti-writings, evocative and speechless, and against the ironies of communication, crumble with and contain that crumbling. Wall as contextualizing component, the political, the sexual limits, or to claim the limits with your name that is no longer spoken. The white paint is no papyrus, stuffing sarcophagi and building the wall itself. Correlative, any political act is sexualized. An aside, wall as grapheme bullets sound. A poem the size of a wall with the logic of a wall is to say two-sided, and context is the easier to define, a poem as wide as a thought. As any action against a political entity is considered a political act, so too with art or with language. Our language will grow as much through erasure as neologism, but also the brick wall or Berlin wall ghost becomes the vessel for a text, is a part of the text, and it is possible to read the scrawled on wall without scrutinizing phoneme and grapheme. Our new languages of capital and design, of poetry, textees, vispo, graffiti, these are temples, new ruins, tributes of failure to access the promise of language. They are all great expenditures, are beautiful, but what can be taken at face value and believed? Almost anything could be said. N has become X. Because we have learned to read without reading, content has been replaced with context. And then there is the inverse. The things of the world, accumulating words too, and their tradition of poetry, of metaphor, may be to give new words to old meanings, but our contemporary tendency, despite technology's neologism, is to shear. If the spirit still resides in this body, to lean into the ear of the word and ask what it sees. Or if the spirit has left the body, 
then the poem is a kind of prayer. The future of the meaning of a word is precarious. The death itself, the corpse, or body in likeness, etymologically speaking. <coughs> this curse better work. My colleague on the fringe, Mr. Mikkel And, has said in the essay, Like Music Against Dream, the fortune of seeing of the non-idiomatic is probably a species away from becoming the condition. Should the design of being change, the capacity for a truer understanding of non-idiomatic art is elevations above the posing which informs much of the recent experimental interpretation. Secret system, secret kitchen, secret secret, secret swamp. I believe in failure because in the heart it is always dawn and in the mind it is always dusk leaving a hole through which we can see the alternative or what comes after. That is, the species or species itself being a blow or loss, and reification, whereas our earlier strengths came from being uncategorizable. Earlier techniques and poetics which questioned or chained what could be considered poetry culminated in the erasure, a stratagem economically minded but internally directed. As modernists have shifted from an avant-garde to a post-avant mindset, they have become as lazy and inoffensive as their counterparts in industrial production. Out there in the world, landfills are piling up, as in the SPD warehouse, with books <laughs> no longer being made by people. By untraining the eye from conventional modes of reading, teaching the eye to sheer convention, what is deeply relaxing within this reading is a sickle or scythe when pulled over to yesterdays. These literatures are underway in production, have even already been called off for by their architects to be finished, snuffed out, undone, because they contain the seeds of their own destruction, that seed which we would cultivate. Visceral poetics, or vispo, a poem or poetics that blurs or distorts its relationship with its context, that which surrounds it, you, the book, a concept, whatever. Perhaps we demand, by providing all posthumous vispo, a place other than a paperback that says vispo in the upper left-hand corner of the back cover. Do I mean graffiti? Poet, be like God. And uh, I'm going to end with a selection from a a larger piece.